Hi, I'm Matt Ryle. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Mawson Rovers. And we build rovers and automation tools to help uh, bring the benefits of space down here to Earth. We're here in the Australian Technology Park at South Everly in Sydney. One of the great things about working here is how it blends the old technology. So this used to be a, um, a rail maintenance yard 100 years ago. And today we're bringing the new technology of space technology and other advanced technologies here in the Cicada building. Space exploration is really taking off at the moment, if you pardon the pun. Uh, you know, there's new technologies coming in, in rocketry and robotics, and we're building on those to, to launch the next level of exploration starting right here in Australia. Three things that happened in the industry that got me interested and in, in wanting to do this. The first one was the development of reusable rockets. So SpaceX started landing rockets on the ground a few years ago. And the second one was SpaceX and NASA teaming up um, with a Starship reusable rocket to get 100 tons to the moon, that we could get to the moon. And I just knew that the stuff that we built for space today was very small and precise. And we needed to be thinking much bigger about how we could build construction vehicles and bobcats for the moon. So the Australian Space Agency was formed in 2018. And in 2021, they launched a $150 million Moon to Mars program. And so that was to help companies like us get started building uh, the future technology that we need to colonize the Moon and Mars. The real interesting innovation that we've found is the overlap between um, sustainable mining and mineral exploration on Earth and space exploration. And so as we've worked on our rovers and talked to people across multiple industries, we've actually found there's benefits of the technology we're developing for space can be applied right here on Earth as well. So one of the examples of that is monitoring dams. So mines have surplus slurry and things like that that they put in these big dams. Monitoring these dams for their stability is something that's quite risky. What we found is mining companies were sending people out on these risky missions to go and monitor these dams in person. With uh, robotics and automation, we can stop putting people in dangerous situations and use those to improve the safety and the sustainability practices of mines right here in Australia. One of the interesting applications of the work that we do is uh, helping search for water on the moon. So scientists believe that over billions of years, water has been slowly deposited into these permanently shadowed craters on the moon. So they're very dark and they're very cold. And we can't actually see in them because they're so dark. And so NASA's plans are to send astronauts back and we would like to send our rover along as well to go and explore these craters and help look for water on the moon. The rovers that we've developed are gonna help with uh, civil engineering and exploring for water on the moon. There's two aspects there that are really important. One is building a sustainable lunar base so that astronauts will be able to go back. A big part of that sustainability is building foundations or the earthworks there. And so we're working with a team in America called Astroport who are building landing pads for rockets on the moon. And so part of the mission that our, our rover's being developed for is supporting building those landing pads where rockets are gonna land on the moon. The second part that I mentioned is looking for water inside the lunar surface. NASA scientists believe that there's water not on the surface, but slightly underneath and maybe in some shadowed craters on the moon. And extracting that water is key to helping astronauts stay for longer duration missions there because water can use to extract oxygen and it can also make rocket fuel out of hydrogen. And so our rover is going to help, help with that search in the future. Thinking about our work so far and what's made us successful so far, it's been the, the people, being able to work with some experienced engineers. My background is working in software at Lassian, Tech Unicorn here in Sydney. And so I worked there for 15 years and met some of the best software engineers in the industry here. Being able to work with them day to day, build some amazing software and robotics has been key. We also have found amazing talent in universities. So Australian universities have some of the best engineering talent in the world. Third thing really is partnerships. So partnerships, working with other companies. When I started on this mission, I thought we would be doing all the aspects of the rover ourselves. But as we've developed the business and we've been able to work with partners, we have found some great uh, companies across Australia and internationally as well uh, that we can work with to build this vision together. I think the best thing about being in Australia is the can-do attitude that everybody has here. We find people willing to help wherever they are and everyone in Australia is very excited about the possible space industry. And probably the most amazing thing for me has been seeing the growth in the industry. So I've been working in this business now for four years. Yeah, so the exciting future for space exploration, I think, is uh, really commercially driven. And that's what we're seeing now take place is that commercial companies are taking astronauts into space, uh, commercial companies building space stations, and commercial companies like us are gonna be building vehicles for the moon and for Mars. 
And that's different to what NASA's done in the past where they've built billion dollar rovers. You know, we're driving the cost down, we're, we're making them commercially useful and we're solving problems here on Earth at the same time. When the opportunity came up to, to really work in this space, that, that was something I wanted to jump at. It kind of started actually with my boss uh, and a couple of colleagues out at dinner one night, uh, back when I worked uh, at Atlassian. Uh, you know, my boss said to me, and you should never do this if, to people on your team, he said, uh, you know, if you weren't working at Atlassian, what would you be doing? And I said, well, really, this is an amazing time with the space industry, and I would love to help Australia, you know, secure our place in this growing industry. And uh, six months later, I, I decided to leave and, and do just that. The industry is really at the cusp of amazing things. Um, transportation to space, the cost is falling. Um, the ability to build smart computer and robotic systems is really growing so fast with the developments in, in AI and robotics. And so we're lucky to play a small part of that. Key moments for us was watching our first hardware be sent into space. So watching that, uh, unfortunately we couldn't go over for the launch, but we were watching the live stream here at 3 a.m. in the morning, Sydney time, and uh, watching that SpaceX rocket take off and knowing that your hardware is on board and going to space was an amazing moment. And then what happened after that is that, you know, two or three weeks later, we got the first signs of, of life from, from the satellite. We started getting data back for our experiments. Uh, we were running some experiments here with UTS here in Sydney. And over the next 12 months, we ran 23 experiments and, and downloaded megabytes of data from our, from our space payload, which is demonstrating new technology for managing heat in space. This was an uh, amazing thing and um, great to see.